What is up my new event friends? Today I'm going to talk to you about some more LSP stuff and specifically configuring a linter, a formatter, and a bunch of awesome autocomplete stuff. If you haven't watched the previous video, then check that out in the top right hand corner and watch that first. Otherwise, let's jump into all the autocomplete and linter and formatter stuff. Like I talked about in the previous video, once you have your LSP set up, then you can configure all kinds of really awesome goodies. And one of those things is your linter which is gonna analyze your source code and look for ways that you can improve it. Linters are more prevalent in dynamic languages than statically typed ones because they rely on the compiler, obviously. One of the plugins that a lot of the community used to use for linting is null ls. This used to be the go-to option and it was kind of an all-in-one for formatters and linters. However, this was really hard to maintain and you can see in this GitHub issue that it's not able to be maintained anymore and it was actually deprecated. There was a community fork made called none ls that you could drop in and use if you were already using null ls, but if you're configuring from scratch or you just wanna get the latest and greatest, then I would suggest using a different one called invim lint. If you're using lazy.invim as your package manager, then you install using something like this where you specify the invim lint plugin and then for this, I'm only loading it based on the event, so buff read or buff new, those will trigger that the linter will start. And then this config block can be broken out into a separate file, but essentially you wanna configure each of the linters by file type. And these are a few examples of ones that I frequently use. So if you use other languages, just add the linter that makes sense for you. Next, I wanna add a auto command. And if you haven't seen my video on auto commands, I'll leave a link to the top right so that you can check that out. It's pretty good, but I might be biased. Then we can also add this key map so that we can trigger the linting whenever we feel like it. Now that we have it set up, we can do a lazy and see that it installs right here or whenever you fire back up NeoVim. If you want to configure the other side, which is adding your linters, then we'll be using Mason to do that. And you can pop this up and see all the different linters. So for me, I can see on number four, these are all the different linters that I have installed. You can set Mason up to automatically install these, or you can do it manually by searching and finding them, and then you can update them whenever you need to. Over here in a TypeScript project, you can see that I have my linter installed and configured, and now you can see some little warnings whenever I open the file where I have this argument type of null or this string that's undefined. Next up, we're gonna configure our formatter. And so for this, you could again use null ls or none ls, but you can actually use a dedicated formatter, which I am leading towards now, which is conform.invim. For this one, we're gonna do something very similar where we install the package. Again, this is lazy.invim, which I highly recommend. Then we'll trigger it on the event to load on buff read pre or a new file. And then this config block, you can break out into its own special Lua file, but I've kind of like to leave these alongside the plugin for now. Next, you configure by file type. So for me, I have a lot of these languages or file types that I like to use. And then we have a key map that we want to set here. For me, it is leader L. So if I hit leader L, then it will format the file. This LSP fallback is really key. So we can use the LSP that we configured in the last video to actually do our formatting for us in case conform.invim doesn't work. The actual command that it's going to run is Lua. And then we're going to do vim.lsp.buff.format. And this is the function that gets called as a fallback within NeoVim. You can set up an auto command to automatically format for you on some event like buff write pre. Here's an example of what that looks like. Or if you wanted to have it format on save, you can do that using the conform.invim config. And this is what that looks like. You would just add that to your config block. Finally, we want to use Mason again to manage our formatters. So we can open up Mason, open up number five, which is our formatters and install all the ones that we need to. Okay, this is probably what you're most interested in, which is how to configure autocompletion. And this in and of itself has a lot of moving parts. It's key to have our LSP configured and up and running. So if you haven't seen the first video, you probably wanna check it out and make sure that you have Mason and your LSP configured. But since I know that you have language servers and your NeoVim client configured using NVIM LSP config, now all we need to do is integrate NVIM CMP or a completion engine to utilize those language servers to autocomplete our code. NVIM CMP is gonna be our hub for our autocompletion and we're gonna add different sources as inputs to then autocomplete our code. Here's an example of some of the configuration using NVIM CMP. You can put this into your NVIM CMP.lua file and you can see that it has a lot of dependencies. 
The first one is going to be your source for anything in the buffer. So it's going to search the buffer and find anything close by that's going to be able to autocomplete. From there, it's going to find things in the file system path for different commands. And then Lua Snip, which is actually a snippet engine. And if you're not familiar with that, it's going to let us autocomplete and have some nice key mapping so that we can tab to different locations inside of a snippet or a block of code. Think of a function call that looks like this, where we can tab to the different locations where we want to add text, add parameters, and then add a return statement. For the snippets to work, we'll need to have the engine, which is Lua Snip, and then we'll need to have the CMP Lua Snip for auto completion, and then an actual snippets library to pull from different languages and essentially serve as different templates. TJ DeVries has a really great video that I want to link in the top right here that'll show you how to add your own snippets, which I found really useful. So in this config block that you can see here, we're configuring in Vim CMP and we're giving it some snippet information. We're giving it some key maps and we want to be able to know when we can go to the next item or the previous item, when to abort the menu or close it. And then whenever we want to confirm something. So confirm will be enter and then up and down in the docs will be control U and D. If you want to trigger autocomplete without typing anything, then you can use control space. Now that we have all that configured, we're going to specify what sources. So this is another section in the config where we're going to order which source we want to see first. The ones I like to have first are the LSP and then the snippets and then anything that's found in the buffer. And finally, anything that's on this file system path. Now that we have that all configured and ready to go, I'm over here in my TypeScript React project. And if we type function, then you can see I have some nice auto completion where I have the LSP first and then a snippet and then some more LSP. And I bet at the very bottom, it might have some buffer things that it's matching on. So if we go down here to our snippet, then I can hit enter and I can see that I can tab and go back using shift tab because I have super tab configured for this. And I can say ASDF here, say Bob here, whatever is the type and then return uh, nil or something like that. So this is how your snippets work and how that tab completion works. Like I mentioned before, if you want to add your own snippets, then check out that video from TJ. If you liked videos like this, then definitely hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, and I will see you in the next Neovim video. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you're having a great day.